FNCS Grand Finals is over and we have a lot to talk about. Peterbot living up to the hype and winning on NA with over 1,000 points. Swizzy and Vanyak winning EU, but is Swizzy actually going to get his prize money from Epic this time? Also, we have some massive team splits already announced after Grand Finals. Clicks and Whale no longer doing. Venno and Tayson no longer doing. And there's rumors Venno might be making the switch to NA to play with Clicks. I want to talk about who's split and who they're now playing with. A lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Firstly, I am a little bit sick. I'm sorry if my voice sounds funny. It's also why I'm uploading this a day later, but I'm happy I waited because some of these team swaps are massive. Let's talk about the leaderboard first, and then we'll talk about who's playing with who now. First off, NA, you already know. Peterbot and Poyo did it. They won with over 1,000 points, winning five out of the 12 games. They weren't able to beat Venno and Queezy's legendary record, but getting over 1,000 points is insane. Having an average elims of 6.17 while still maintaining an average points of 5.67 this will go down in history as the most dominant performance we've ever seen for a whole season they won all four duo cash cups and the grand finals they managed to go uncontested at grimgate 12 games out of 12 a lot of people predicted they were going to get contested on day two. A lot of teams want to drop there, grief them. I was expecting this to happen, but they had such a big lead over every other team. It didn't really make sense to land on them anymore because they had nothing to play for. They'd already won FNCS after like game eight or nine. Reed and Ritual put up a really good performance when they got a win on the second day with nine elims towards the end of the tournament. People started to think maybe there was a chance. Maybe they could make the comeback and we finally see a team beat Peterbot and Poyo. But... As you know, Reed and Ritual weren't able to do it, but a still extremely impressive 753 points, which puts Reed and Ritual straight to the LAN event, as well as Kanata and Cooper. Third place on day two, 692 points total. Again, they were second place going into the second day. They didn't have an as good of a day. It was still very impressive, but I did predict this. Their split didn't have as good loot, and honestly, they were playing out of their minds. There were so many games on day one. They had almost no loot, nothing to their name, and they somehow pulled off a win or really good placement. I knew it was going to be hard to back that up on day two, and they still did really well, and all three of them are now going to the LAN event. So a lot of people who are expecting that Peterbot's now going to struggle on LAN, they get to find Find out. Now remember, this also means Peterbot and Poyo have now come second last FNCS and won this FNCS. I feel like a lot of people were focusing on, you know, Grimgate, the medallion, Peterbot and Poyo, you know, only doing well with the OP items. They came second last season. This is an extremely dominant back-to-back -back performance from Peterbot and Poyo. And going into the new season, they could be a favorite to do it again. Again, on NA, it's only the top three that make it to land, but an extremely impressive performance from Skittles and Trashy in fourth place, just missing out on the land qualification. And they're one of the teams that has already split up. I can't believe it. They were literally one place off land coming fourth in a grand finals, and that wasn't good enough for them. Again, I'll talk about that a bit later. We have Acorn and Cold, the duo that had already qualified to land. They didn't need this as badly, but honestly, an extremely impressive fifth place. They were triple contested at fencing fields. Actually, sorry, quadruple contested. A fourth team showed up to contest fencing fields. Almost everyone else at the drop, Muzz's team, Yasir's team, they all struggled, but Acorn and Cold pulled it off yet again. Cold basically hasn't been playing this season if you haven't been paying attention at all cold was like level 50 or 60 when the duo cash cups came around just had not been playing at all and they still pulled off a top five in fncs with four teams of their poi and it's a pretty not great poi without the vault anymore now we have bryce and bolt a team that a lot of you guys question when i put them in my top 10 they came sixth place overall they were actually top five for most of the weekend falling a little bit short on day two but still an extremely impressive performance we had a vivan chubbs one of the teams to form out of the snake midway through FNCS coming in seventh. They again have also already split up. Batman, Buga, and Rapid in eighth. Baka and Paz in ninth. And then Yomzo and Rai is the kind of, I, I want to say underdogs. They were a big favorite going into it. But after day one, they were really quiet, sneaking their way up and getting a top 10 finish. I do also want to take a chance to shout out Oliver OG and Larson in 12th place. Oliver OG, a big spotlight on him this season with Asian Jeff splitting up. You know, was that a good decision? Doing it from a horrendous drop spot as well on the far northeast of the map holding on. Blake and Mackwood in 11th, and then Clicks and Epic Whale in 14th, one of the big teams that has now confirmed to have split up. Clicks was having a whole bunch of problems. He was having PC issues on day two. He blue screened in one of the game where his PC crashed. He had to then start queuing up on his stream PC because his game PC wasn't working. It was a pretty rough day for them. If you watch Clicks' streams, you already know this. The vibes were down and it has led to them splitting up. Clicks' message to Epic Whale was a little bit sad. You could see that it was Clicks' decision. He doesn't want to split up with Epic Whale. He loves 
was playing with him, even mentioning he's like a brother to him, but he really wants to win an FNCS. So we're going to talk later in the video about who that he thinks he's going to actually win FNCS with, and it's a big one. Age Zambuga, after a very questionable day one, they were really struggling out of contested Mount Olympus. They brought it back on day two. They were doing really well at the start of day two, getting a few huge games. Unfortunately, it came a bit unstuck for them again, and they still finished off with a respectable top 13. There's some other big teams to talk about as well. Dukes and Mero underperforming by most people's standards. They have now split up Muslim Paper in 16th. They're splitting up Paco and Mixon, the EU boys in 15th. Again, a good performance, but they have now split up. There's some big teams, but I want to talk about EU first. Moving on over to EU, Swizzy and Vanyak. I feel like a lot of people may be surprised to see this name up here when they shouldn't. Swizzy has now won two FNCSs on EU and one of them on Asia. But the big question, is Swizzy going to get screwed like he did last year? If you didn't follow exactly what happened to Swizzy, because he is a Russian resident, he did not have residency in any other country. When he won FNCS last chapter, he wasn't able to get his prize money and he wasn't able to go to land. That's why him and Putri did not attend but I have good news Swizzy and Vanyak Swizzy has now gotten Serbian Brett residency which means he can claim his prize money and he is going to land a super impressive performance from this duo 888 points they absolutely dominated EU Swizzy is looking like one of the best players on EU of the last two chapters and he came from Asia which I think is such a cool storyline for the, the smaller regions a lot of people focusing on EU being the biggest and best region showing that the players at the top of other regions can come over and and can still dominate winning two FNCSs now doing extremely extremely well and again I feel like most professional players in Swizzy's situation after winning on the biggest region hundreds of thousands of dollars and land and having that stripped away from them because of something that's out of their control again it's regulations put on Epic Games as a US company it's so much bigger than them there's nothing they could do about it and he still kept playing still kept grinding took the steps required to move to Serbia to get residency play from Serbia and now he is going to get the rewards from all his hard work i'm super super happy to see this duo win it vanyak again has been playing extremely well for a while now very very underrated player and i'm not surprised to see them at the top another team i'm not surprised to see chap and teeny this is insane in chap's first ever FNCS Grand Finals. He has come second on EU alongside Teeny. I also have to mention Teeny being a controller player, not normally a big talking point on other regions, but on EU when we have yet to ever see a controller player win FNCS on EU ever in 22 Grand Finals, having Teeny come second, which is EU's highest performance for a controller player alongside someone who has never played in Grands is extremely impressive. 637, again, still really, really good performance, just not as good as Swizzy and Vanyak. Swizzy and Vanyak winning three games of the 12, averaging five elims a game, and a top 10 finish in every single game is insane. Chapentini again, were doing this out of the Mr. Savage Mongrel split. A lot of people questioning why Mr. Savage and Mongrel have been going there for so many seasons. It's a bad job. They need to leave. They're getting griefed. Chapentini showing how strong it is when you are contested. Then in third place, we have Seti and Kami, the Poles. No surprise to see them there. Remember, on EU, the top five teams are making it to LAN. So Seti and Kami will be going to yet another LAN as the best performing LAN team in Fortnite's modern history. Since we've started to see these new LANs, Seti and Kami a big favorite to do well. Then we had Vadil and Rezon. I will say I was completely wrong on this one in my prediction. Vadil and Rezon are phenomenal players. As I said in my video, I have no doubt in their ability as players I just thought they were on an absolutely terrible split of the map and they proved me completely wrong getting a fourth place overall qualifying to land from a split that has like 15 or 16 chests and for most of the uh, weekend they were actually splitting half that split with Glubshi's team I'm blown away they played super well they played super aggressive and alpha up the bunkers around them which again was a strategy I was a little bit scared about but they played extremely well and they 100% deserved the land qualification and in fifth place a French team we haven't seen the French been doing very well in the last few chapters. Andalex and Sato had an insane comeback. On day one, they went in in 45th place. They had like 40 points or something and then went on to get 543 total. Their day two was insane. On day two alone, they got two wins and a second place and that secured their land finish in the very last game. It was super exciting to see them run back with it. Again, they were actually a little bit clear with the land spot because in six, we had Mustache and Malabuka who already called to land. 
Lan. Again, I'm not really sure what happened to Mustache and Malabuka this weekend. Dropping Grimgate, had it single contested for most of the weekend, but quite often walked away with the Dash Medallion. Just couldn't have that same dominance Peterbot and Poyo had. Again, a lot of people talking about how on EU, the region wasn't conditioned as much as NA. Players were playing a lot more aggressive around Mustache and Malabuka, where everyone was letting Peterbot and Poyo just run away with it, basically. Still a great performance. They'd already called to land, so finishing outside top five doesn't really matter too much for them. Queasy and Thomas, again, the other team on EU who was already in land, finishing in seventh. An insane performance. Like I said with Rezon and Badil, phenomenal team. I had no doubt in them as the, at their abilities, but I did doubt they would do this well while well, triple contested at Mount Olympus. Again, you can look at Booga's performance, 13th, not terrible, but again, that was their performance while being only single conned at Mount Olympus. So a really, really Really impressive performance from Queasy and Thomas. We had Trulux and Chicho, one of the favorites at the start of the season to win FNCS. One of my picks to win it after the first few tournaments. Went a little bit quiet, but still a very respectable eighth place overall. Fastroki and Robin in ninth, a very underrated team who was in that land run right at the very end, just fell short. Then we have Wox and Pixie, the Swedes in 10th place. And then just outside of that, the big name Venno and Tayson. Still not qualified to land. And like I said, have now split up as a duo. Speaking of splitting, Cringe and Noms in 12th place who went into day two in second. They went from second down to 12th. A very, very rough day two for them. They have also now split up. Again, scrolling down the leaderboard, some other big names who did underperform a little bit as well. Snazy and Podesai, the Frenchies going up against Venno and Tayson. Not struggling, but getting an 18th out of fencing fields. A bit of an underperformance. Yanis and Flixie, uncontested Reckless Railways in 20th place. Again, comparing that to Reed and Ritual on NA, who got second in a similar situation. Is a bit rough for Yanis and Flixie. Mappy and Kiro, another team in my top 10 who weren't even inside the top 20. Bit of a rough one for them. Tripburn and Fredoxy getting 24th overall, shocking a lot of people myself included their strategy to wrap their way in around Grimgate and work their way in just didn't work they did only have 11 games play they didn't get to connect into one of their games so a big elim win could have jumped them up there but again Vico and Pink in 32nd. I think one of the biggest shock uh, performances of the weekend. They didn't get contested. I don't even know what happened to them. I had them in my top three. Again, another team that has now, obviously with this performance, split up. So I've teased enough teams that have split. Let me run through them all and let's talk about who I think they might be playing with coming into their last chance to make the LAN event. You're probably wondering why so many of these teams are splitting. Again, some of them having insane performances like Trashy and Skittles coming fourth, but there is only one more chance to make the LAN event. Next season, the top 10 teams on EU and the top 10 teams on NA are going to make the LAN event. So there's only 10 spots up for grabs on the two biggest regions to make LANs. This is putting a lot of pressure on these teams who didn't secure it in the first two majors. So let me run through some of the big teams on EU and NA first, and then I'll talk about who they might be playing with. So on EU, confirmed to have split, we have Pink and Vico, Yanis and Flixie, Venno and Tayson, Money and Fenean, they already split up a bit earlier, Cringe and Noms, and Paco and Mixon. I'm saying they're EU, but they were playing on NA, but you know what I mean. And then NA, really big names. Pump and Npen, Mero and Dukes, Aviv and Chubbs, Muzz and Paper, Clicks and Epic Whale, and Trashy and Skittles. Now, we're not really going to know exactly who's playing with who as this plays out. My pick on EU was going to be Pink and Venno. Pink did say on the podcast I run with Levin each week, most recently on Hotline FM that he actually had a chance to play with Venno potentially at the start of the season and looked like he was going to. So I had my eyes on Pink and Venno to be playing together, but people are now saying that Venno has been talking in DMs and messaging people about how he would go about getting his visa to go and play in NA. Now, as someone who had to travel from another country to work in North America, I moved last year to the United States and Canada with my family. It is extremely hard to get a work visa. So I don't know how possible it's going to be for teams this last minute to make their way over to NA. I know I was talking about Mr. Savage and Mongrel hopefully doing it. I was hoping they already had this in the works before. Only having about a month, less than a month until the next FNCS starts, by the way. It is starting next month. It is coming around so quick with the new season only a few days away. Teams like Venno who do want to potentially make the split have maybe left it too late. I've talked about how seeing EU teams move to NA would potentially make a lot of sense. The region is half as big with the same amount of qualifications to land this season, so or next season. So a lot of people are going to be looking for 
for it, but you need to get the proper uh, qualifications and paperwork to go over there. You can't just go on a, a travel visa. They might try, and again, it could potentially happen. We've seen crazy things happen, but if these pros want to do it seriously, they have left it pretty late. So I know there's a lot of rumors of Venom and Clicks. We'll have to see what happens. As far as who Clicks could play with outside of this, I don't really know. There are some big names moving around. We could even see like a Clicks and Mero come out of nowhere. Maybe Clicks and Dukes running it back. They did come top four when they played together a few chapters ago. There's some big teams looking for big players, and we are going to see some insane teams come coming into the next event. But so far, basically no one has announced. We've had some ones that look like trolls. Muzz saying he's playing with Epic Whale, which I would absolutely love, but I didn't reach out to Muzz and it doesn't look like this is a real team, but it could potentially become one. This is before we actually heard word from Clicks and Epic Whale that they had split and it was just a joke. This could become serious very, very soon, but I wish I had conclusive teams to give you, but because the new season hasn't even started yet, we're not gonna see anyone really lock in a duo, I don't think, for at least another week. Once the new season starts, they announce the Cash Cubs FNCS only a few weeks away. We'll start seeing the teams lock in and you know I'll have you covered in the videos. With the new season later this week, I know I haven't made any videos on it. Don't worry, I'll be making a video covering all the leaks, all of my thoughts on the new season because it is looking insane and a lot of it has already been leaked. So I'm sorry I haven't had that content out. I've been focusing on grand finals, but don't worry, all eyes on the new season.